have him on the show near the end there. But growing up watching, you never realized he was a player. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would have loved him. I was on the road with him. I was on the road with him for a week. Well, actually, two weeks. And I'm still not only telling stories, but sometimes when I'm telling the stories, those two weeks, a new one. So much happened in two weeks because every time he opened his mouth, it was funny. Yeah. He was a player. You you want to hear the funniest thing I ever heard him say? He, He did a show and... You know, blew the house away in at the Aladdin, and he comes off and he goes, oh, I'm, "Come on, you know, I'm so depressed." I'm like, I said, "No, wait a minute. How could you blow a room away in Las Vegas? They loved you. You destroyed them for an hour. How could you be depressed?" He goes, "It's like eating a broad. You know what's in it for me?" <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! I never got used to that. It's like eating a broad. What good, what good is it for me? Is that the greatest? I mean, it's, right. And he probably meant it too. No, <laughs> there was no irony, no humor. Uh, no, he was talking uh, fact. Uh, wow. that, that's why I think he was so great in Natural Born Killers. Because everybody got this silly side, then you got to see that's that fucking oh, crazy that dark. Yeah. 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 Mm. He was a yeah. natural born killer? Yeah, oh, he, yeah was he, was. he was the father. He was the father. Rodney yeah. was the father. He was oh, yeah. Mallory's father. Wow. And the right. sitcom. The abusive father, yeah. Yeah, go up and take a bath for daddy. It was just. Yeah. A, yeah. You know what? When I was with him, he had, just ta- he had just filmed Caddyshack. Because in the middle of the Las Vegas Jesus. run, he had to run to uh, Los Angeles through the reaction shots. And then I said to him years later, I said, Jesus Christ. Caddyshack, you know, it looked like you guys snorted coke before every <laughs> before every take. He says, you know why? Because we snorted coke before every take. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> you know the funniest thing you ever said? You know, it, it's the it's the fact that it's not funny and he's just talking that made him so. When I first went away with him, when I went to meet him as a apartment, I said, listen. You just have to know, I'm going to laugh every time you open your mouth, and I'm not sucking your cock. I ju- <laughs> you are, uh, you have always been my hero. I didn't say all this to him, but yeah. he's always been my hero, and and he's funny. That voice is, mm-hmm. it's just fucking funny. And we're in Fort Lauderdale at Easter time, and we're walking along. Now you know what the beach is like in Fort Lauderdale at Easter time, and he wasn't that crazy, crazy famous. That he was just. He had just started doing the Miller beer commercials. He's like, Jesus Christ, I've been doing this shit for so long, and now the whole fucking world knows who I am from those stupid commercials. Because you get so much more exposure. It's not Johnny Carson once every four months. It's right. But they hadn't really started to hit that much yet. And we're walking along, and there's all these beautiful girls. (laughs) He actually (laughs) said out loud. He turned to me and goes, don't you wish you could just fuck anybody you wanted? <laughs> I said, yes, but I never thought that was necessary to say it out loud. You know, don't you wish you could just fuck anybody you want? <laughs> yeah, he, he fucking, Rodney's a weird case because he made it like, he's a guy doing comedy for all these years and then he drops out and he goes back to his gig of, and, and comes back and makes it when he's older. I mean, at least he came back. It, was a, it was a classic. classic where, where did he story. jump out? What, what did he he, I think he wasn't making it. He, he wasn't did, doing well and he had a wife and two Two kids that he had to support. What, 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 what he hit in the 40s. Aluminum siding. He, yeah, he sold aluminum siding for 12 oh, years Jesus. in Jersey. When, when did he come back? He, he, he came back when he was like 49 or something? He came back oh, when he was like 40s. 40. Oh, 40. Okay, he, from okay. 28 to 40, he was out. But you know who reinserted him into show business? And it, it, of all the bullshit you've ever heard, King Broder is the guy who reinserted. Do you know who King Broder is? I know the name. Uh, he, he's the guy. He's the guy who sued Eddie Murphy. He's because he signed up all the comedians. You know, you bet on every horse in the race, and right. Eddie Murphy, you know, right. And he earned it. But he took Rodney around, and you know, and Rodney actually put it in his book. You know, and, and it's like, and he jumped back in, and he used to say, you know, I got, I got, I got Sullivan before I had no respect. You know, <laughs> <laughs> was he? Wait, was he still? Uh, bef- did he do Sullivan before he dropped out, or, or uh, after he came back? I think, I think when he got back, I don't think he did Sullivan before he before he dropped out, but he didn't have uh, I get no respect immediately. I heard he got that from, uh, I think, from, from George. George Pips, right? Yeah. The, the story with that was that Georgie Starr, who was George from Pips, um. I guess had a whole thing in his act. He had a, an act, and he was an, an Italian, and it was he insisted on respect. He wanted respect. He, he, you got to respect me, and I think Rodney flipped that and said, you know, and he liked the respect angle. So it, it was one of those gray areas, mm-hmm. you know. Did, did you who took what, or did he? Did, did it was it fine? And you guys deal with that gray area a lot. Oh, there's so much. Yeah, because that's all there is, you know. And there's <laughs> nothing new, you know. I. Yeah. I don't make any bones. I tell old jokes. People, you know, people say, "Hey, do you write these?" I say, "I write the lines," and I'm as funny. You know, I, 
I for 15 years, Howard was reading stuff off the paper that he didn't pre-read. It's coming out of my head <laughs> into his mouth. I, well, you and know that's not old jokes. That's as fresh as it could fucking be. But I but I tell old jokes, and they're from everywhere. And for a long time, people didn't know that Howard was reading your stuff. It, it, and who cares? Uh, uh, you, know? Well, you know? Well, I didn't care. Uh, uh, well, my whole thing was just pay me. Well, I just want to get paid. Pay I don't me. want somebody yeah. to say, hey, you know. I, think, I, I mean, that's that's nice of you, but I think most people would care. Like, you know, that. Well, it's like Carson's yeah. writers. You know, he's not going to uh, tell a joke. Right, right. Hey, Eddie Smith sent, gave me that. You know, who gives <laughs> yeah. a fuck? People, people finally start realizing, which I think, I, I, all I'm saying is it must have felt good when people finally start realizing, oh, my God, Jackie's uh, feeding a lot of this stuff when the TV show hit, and then you could see you in the corner, yeah. like, doing. When you're thing. Let me tell you. I'm not trying to like. No, no. You, it, it, I'm just trying. You know. This is all old stuff. But okay. In the very beginning, nobody knew Robin was black. I mean, it was so funny. <laughs> People used to come and say, "I heard Robin is black." Is that true? I mean, this is way in the beginning. Oh yeah. Way, but what? Yeah. I start. I worked for him for free for three years, and slowly but surely, Sorry, I started Jimmy. handing him little pieces of snippets of paper and stuff. And just one day a week, you know, coming in, and I loved it because I was getting promoted. You know. They, Somebody on NBC AM telling the world where I'm going to be. I yeah. mean, that, that's invaluable. And uh, I used to go on once a week and bring comedians with me. And there were so many comedians that say, hey, what's a pay? I'm not coming. And to this day, uh, they're like, I can't believe dummies, I said no. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, we go to mornings, and, and he says, I want you to do your thing with the notes. So I'm passing notes, and nobody knows it. And I don't know whether it had been a month, a year, whatever it had been. But nobody really knows. It's it's not that we're hiding it. It's just kind of like a thing that you know. Nobody ever said, "Hey, Robin's black." It's like you know, it, you know. <laughs> right. So everyone was is, cool with it. I so. think this is the yeah. fun, most fun story. So Robin says, "Oh yeah, there, there's an oldies uh, quiz." And the people from Congress really had a tough time with the oldies quiz because they didn't know the answers. And people thought that the congressmen would know more about the United States. And, blah, 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 blah. and Howard said, "Well, Robin, give me give me the rock and roll quiz." So, of course, you know, we're all sitting there, and she starts asking him questions. And as he's asking, you know, we're cheating and giving him the answers. They know, I know all these, you know, I was a musician, blah, blah, blah. And so she goes, what are some of the hits by Gary U.S. Bonds? Now, I, I, you guys probably aren't old enough, but Gary U.S. Bonds, who ironically has become a very good friend of mine, had a huge hit in the 60s called Quarter to Three. Don't you know that I dance? I dance till quarter to three. Da, 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 my mama and daddy G. You know, it's a classic dance song. So she goes, what are the, some of the songs by, by, what are some of the songs by, by Gary U.S. Bonds? And I wrote in digital two colon 45 <laughs> and put it up. That's and how it goes. 245 <laughs> and Fred, I got it on tape. You got to hear it. Fred, no, no. <laughs> and we start screaming. Robin's screaming. I'm screaming. We're laughing. And Howard's like, what's going on? Because he had no fucking idea. What's going on? With and then she goes, and Fred goes, it's quarter to three. And he goes, you jerk. He says, if you're going to cheat, at least. And I'm, in my mind, I was like, now the whole world knows that I'm writing. Right, right, right. <laughs> Nobody had any idea. Nobody, <laughs> nobody put it together. They you know, thought it just a, being funny. Really is that a classic? That's that's is a that classic a classic? Bit, man. Yes. <laughs> a string of Pelopides. Right, 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 right. Wow. I did not mean to come in here and hijack the show. Good, please. Right. Right. We were yeah. honestly were we were having kind of a uh, you listening to type the show hour before so. you got here. <laughs> yeah. You should come in at nine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't listen to this shit. We have March twelfth and thirteenth, New York Comedy Club in Boca Raton, and Morell's on. Monday. I got to call Sid. Ro you know Sid Rosenberg? I yeah, gotta, I got to yes. call him today. I used to love that guy. He's a great character. I got to call him because he's in Miami and he's going to. He's help the only me guy up. that has blown up more spots than me and Ed. So <laughs> that's yeah. why we love the guy. <laughs> I, I never. I actually never. March yeah. twelve and thirteen in Florida. I would actually go to that, but I'll be in Chicago. Yeah, I know. In, uh, nice at Zany's, two different places. See, yeah, I like to. Same. I like to whore my plugs too. I just fucking chop them whenever I can. You, you got it. You work at, at the Well Street. No, I do one night in Vernon, Vernon Hills and one night in. Uh, yeah, Well Street is too small of a club for Jim. Oh, that is oh. in Chicago. What's the other wow. one? Vernon Hills and Kenny. And, that was uh, a nice St. Charles. No, it's only hundred seats. It's just. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love. I love. Zanies. I've, I've done that room. I, I used to love going on a Thursday and doing a show there. It's a fucking great club. You know now. You know that used to be a whorehouse. No. You know? Oh, that's a great. It was a whorehouse, and they kept getting busted. So Rick made it a bookstore, a dirty bookstore with, I guess, a rub and tug in the back. Right.
But Rick got so tired of jumping out the window when the cops came 